Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Polygon Live. We are here checking out Invisible Ink from Clay Entertainment. We're here with Jason and James who are happy to show us the game and I'm happy to see it because I'm very excited. Um, let's start with the basics. What kind of game is this? Awesome, yeah. Invisible Ink is a uh, tactical espionage game. So um, whereas a lot of games say they're about one thing like espionage, they often end up being about combat, right? Sure. And Invisible Ink, the idea is it's an espionage tactical espionage game that's actually about espionage. Yeah. yeah. You would fail if you just ran in and killed everyone. Yeah, well, if you, you know, you can slowly build up to a, a style of play that might allow you to be more deadly. Sure. Um, but it's definitely not the default in the way that it is yeah. in uh, a lot of games. Yeah. Well, it's very, uh, you know, top level. Let's, let's start dipping into the gameplay and then we can sort of wrap our hands around it a little better. Let's do it. So we've got like an isometric view, I, people that have played like XCOM, that's definitely like a familiar uh, view here. Absolutely, XCOM is one of our uh, major influences and uh, Jason spawned into, uh, it's a totally procedural level here. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is never going to be the same twice. Uh, he's in one of our, one of our three corporations right now. Um, so the idea is that you're, you're kind of a super secret spy mm -hmm. and you're taking down these very, very deadly corporations. Um, He's got a, a, a cyborg engineer and a, a stealth unit, and he's gonna kind of be sneaking around and, and trying to get some information initially um, and uh, avoid these kind of guards that are walking around. So he's on patrol, he hasn't seen anyone. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and one of the core ideas of the game is that we're giving the player tons of information to observe and kind of you know react and act. Mm -hmm. um, so it is that you know the, Jason can see where that guard's walked last turn and where he's gonna walk next turn. And the idea is to basically put the player's decisions on a higher level, um, a higher, more like strategic tactical level than just, you know, having to observe the guy's walk patrol path back and forth. Now, when he has that information immediately, now he can think, you know, how do I plan around this? How do I create a trap that maybe does something a few turns from now? Sure. So in this case with the guard, uh, where are we seeing, like, we know he's going to walk so the white right. path, the yeah. uh, the red ghost is, is where Jason saw him last. Oh, okay. And the white path is, uh, is his next step. Oh, I see. Jason's also hacking uh, CPUs, so this uh, game has sort of a, a cyberpunk layer to it. Um, so Jason's hacking the, the uh, CPU systems of the corporation. Now he's going to the mainframe mode, and he's taking over the corporation's security and using it against the uh, corporation awesome. he's in. So there's kind of a, a second layer of, uh, of kind of hacking in this game. Um, so now once he hacks that camera, that camera no longer spots him, and now it actually gives him its vision. Oh, super cool. Yeah. He's uh, exploring the level right now. He's seen two guards, and he's kind of wandering around this locked room. So that, that room is uh, totally locked. Uh, the game is turn-based, so you know every every time he runs out of movement points yeah. and kind of action points, he's ending his turn. And every time he ends his turn, the the opponent gets a turn. So is that a, a skill that you need in this case to like pick a lock, or how, how does that work? If you're so he's looking for a, a key card right okay. now. That's a super heavily defended room, but it's got uh, some goodies in it, basically. So that's another one of the ideas of the game is that there are a lot of trade-offs that you can make as a player. So, you know, you have limited resources to collect all these things. Do you want to be super dangerous? Do you want to play it safe and try to, you know, you won't get as much, but you also won't lose as much. Yeah. I was lucky. I found the pass card right in the first place. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. I see that. So where was the pass card? Uh, right when I started. He was like... Uh, oh, nice. Uh, This is very intense. <laughs> it is the very music, intense. It's just like, at any moment, things could go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the idea. It's like, uh, a lot of what we want to focus on is, is high-level planning, but also the player should feel at all times like stuff can go wrong, yeah. right? It's a, it's a game about both high-level planning and improvisation, mm -hmm. basically. So it's about getting, in, getting yourself into these situations, but then stuff will go wrong, mm -hmm. right? Stuff you won't expect to happen will happen. So what's happening here? You're making a choice between these yeah. upgrades? So now Jason's gotten into this highly protected room. It took him a ton of uh, a kind of CPU hacking to get in here. Um, and now he's choosing between these augments. So uh, his character can permanently use up one of their inventory slots to augment themselves, basically. So now his character is one of the, the forms of progression we have in the game, basically. Um, now his character is going to do something different. I didn't see which augment he took. Oh yeah, so his character is now better at, uh, better at melee, basically. Nice. So as you kind of install these augments, some of them are synergistic and uh, create kind of more complex layers of depth. So you could have an augment that makes you better, makes you better at meleeing, or you can have an augment that kind of gives you your action point back when you melee, oh, maybe. Okay. So you can set up these kind of longer combos. Cool. 
Now, how formal are these characters that you're playing as? Like, are they pretty strict? Like, okay, this guy's always going to be like a hacker type, or how does it break down? There? Yeah, the characters are actually um, they're set. So when okay. you enter the game, you have um, a character, and it's he's actually a named character. He has a, a backstory that you kind of discover as you play over and over again. Um, so if you like, you know, follow his path, you can kind of see what he's all about. Uh, however, Jason is using two of the characters right now. There are actually six characters in the game mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, and so one of the big forms of variation in the game, along with the procedural levels, is you can start out with different teams. So, you know, if you can, this is a more uh, balanced team, I'd say. It's one of the newbie teams. Um, but it also has some of the best, you know, forms of gameplay. But as you, uh, as you kind of research and, and, and gain more experience through playing the game, mm -hmm. you'll unlock more teams. Um, you can you can kind of embrace difficult, maybe more expert level play styles. Cool. Uh, we we're, we were seeing some of the CPU spending. So that's like a currency almost that yeah. you're spending. Absolutely. Where are you getting those CPU points? So you get ambient CPU points every turn. So kind of the longer you're around in the level, the more it builds up. Um, at the same time, there's an alarm that's building up all the time. So that's kind of the trade-off there. Oh, I see. So if you look at the threat level up there, that's uh, that's kind of actually the, the pacing in, in each level. Okay. Um, but you can also, the, most of your CPU points come from hacking those consoles that Jason's been hacking. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're little computers, little like laptop looking computers around the level. Uh, and every time Jason hacks one of those, he gets a little bit more CPU points. Um, certain ones are more valuable than others. So if he hacks one that's, say, really far away or in a, in a difficult to get to location, uh, he'll get more CPU points. Sure. So now he's found himself he's in, in one pickle. of these. He's in one of these improvisational situations. He's been planning and now he's improvising. <laughs> um, so he just, he ran out of that guy's line of sight. The okay. exclamation point is another form of information we're giving to the player. Sure. Um, so now Jason can see where that guy's gonna go next turn and where he's interested in going. So the exclamation point shows like, oh, he's left my line of sight. I better hunt him to this room where I, I last saw him. So as the alarm went up, uh, basically the corporation gets more dangerous. Uh, eventually, if the alarm, yeah, so because Jason was able to see where uh, where that guy was going, he was able to plan and kind of set up a trap for him. Nice. So he uh, booby trapped the doors. Exactly, yeah. Uh, as the alarm gets higher, the corporation gets more dangerous. Eventually, uh, new enemies come onto the level. Oh, wow. And the longer you stay on the level, it, it actually becomes eventually incredibly dangerous. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of stay on the level longer, get more resources mm -hmm. from the level. Um, but it, it, it gets to be a more dangerous proposition the, the longer you do so. So you've gotten another character here. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now Jason has a team of three agents. Uh, and one of the big differences between this game and um, some other stealth games is that you're actually planning and doing more tactical stealth. Okay. Um, so you know, having three agents allows you to do a lot of different stuff than, say, if you're controlling a single character in a mm -hmm. stealth game. Where it's a lot of hiding. Is there a chance to hit anything like that, or is it always successful? There is a chance to hit. Okay. Um, it's much lighter yeah. than a game that's more combat focused. Um, oh wow, you're Yikes. in trouble. <laughs> in that case, he yeah. hit you. So the enemies well. are really dangerous from the get-go, basically. Yeah. Uh, definitely a very difficult game. Um, but yeah, the chance to hit is much lighter than a more oh, combat focused okay. game. Uh, however, there is some positional gameplay, there's some tactical gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you build your characters out to be more combat focused characters, then uh, you'll find yourself caring more and more about sure. you know, chances to hit and critical chances. So Red has died very quickly. Is, That's right. is, is Red gone? Are you never going to be able to play uh, that No, so game? Red is, uh, is dead until you revive her. Okay. Um, so she stays permanently in kind of an in-between state. Sure. Um, so you can wander the level, the level gets more dangerous, you can try to find one of these med gels. Uh, Jason has one already. Um, if you fail to revive her and you, you have to exit the level, then yeah, she's, okay. she's dead permanently. Wow. So it's not a, it's not a game-ending loss right, to lose sure. an agent, um, but it is quite painful. What's the arc of the story? So are you, given the fact that they're all procedural levels, is there still like this arc that you're following and yeah. like an end game and stuff Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. Yeah, so there is an arc to the story that you're kind of following. Um, some of it's in right now. A lot of it is also still in a, an a sort of alpha stage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're basically taking down these corporations and you're going to follow this, uh, this story of what your agents are doing on a larger scale. Sure. And then also if you're kind of exploring the levels, there are incidents and uh, uh, various kind of lore elements hidden away in the levels. Okay. So if you want a kind of deeper atmospheric uh, gameplay experience, you'll find it by exploring more or less. Cool. Uh, dialogue sequences and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Characters. Discovering character backstory, exactly. Sure. Yeah. This guy's a robot. Yeah. He looks awesome. It's a cyborg.
Yeah, the visual style, I w can you talk about what you guys were going for in terms of the art style? Absolutely. Um, so the art style has gone through a number of iterations. Uh, where we're at right now is kind of a, it's, it's both set almost in the future and the past at sure. the same time. It's a little bit cyberpunk, so that, that's sort of the future elements. But at the same time, it, it looks, um, it's very inspired by like spy movies mm -hmm. and uh, 60 spy posters and yeah. things like that. Um, nice, yeah. you got out. Oh, well done. But that's only one floor. That's, that's right, that is only one floor. And Jason lost an agent as well. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> so you lose that threat level when you advance to the next floor? That's right, yeah. Okay. So each floor gets gradually harder and harder, but the alarm is only for the current floor. So it's kind of, you know, the beginning of each level is a little bit more peaceful. It's kind of exploring, gathering resources. And then as you take turns um, in that level and prepare, it actually starts to get more dangerous for you, and you have to kind of ramp up how quickly you're doing things. I see. I just like, yeah, it's it's tough, especially with these sorts of games. Obviously, you design them in such a way that you're slowly introduced to all these aspects, but uh, it's a little difficult to just jump in and you're like seeing everything thrown at you at once. Absolutely, yeah. I can sense all the things that would totally grab me and be interesting. Um, it's just a matter of like focusing in on them and, and seeing how they'd be introduced. Yeah. Is there a tutorial mode? There is. Yeah, we there's a tutorial. Um, it's kind of fresh in the in the alpha. Yeah. Um, we're kind of working on getting that ramp up for players. Sure. Uh, it's definitely gotten a lot better, um, and it should be it should be quite strong by the time the game launches. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's definitely a game for uh, for people who love tactics games. You know, yeah. ideally, it, it's both for people who love tactics and espionage. But it's very very tactical game. There's a lot of interesting like layers, and that that requires a lot of interface. Yeah. It also seems like a very scalable game because we're running this on a MacBook <laughs> Air right now. That's right. That's awesome. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are stuck with like a work computer that they feel like could never run any new game. Yeah. But this game uh, pretty pretty much will work on just about anything, right? Yeah, absolutely. Our hope is to uh, is to you know have totally scalable uh, minimum specs. Um, I don't know exactly what we're gonna be able to run it on sure. finally. Um, but as you can see, it's not a uh, it's not like a 3D AAA. Right. You know, it doesn't need. Uh, and obviously, yeah, you know, computer. that was, you know, Don't Starve as well is also very scalable and exactly, that yeah. seemed to work out for you guys. So, um, is there like a character sheet? I'm just like, is there a way to like look at like yeah. a character's like full rundown of what they have? Yeah. So if you, uh, if you go into the character sheet, it'll display like, uh, there you go. Oh, it'll okay. display like kind of their, their base statistics and also sure. the specialties they have. Um, the interface is still in a, a period of transition right now, so as you can see, there's like the buttons look a little bit off from the uh, the actual like font and HUD. Sure. Um, because we're transitioning over to the new interface, but yeah, eventually, you know, the, the, you'll be able to get into the basically the nitty gritty of of all the numbers. Um, but the idea of the game is that it's less about numbers than say XCOM or something like that, okay. where you're really caring about you know every these combinations of of multipliers and stuff. You know, it's a lot more about kind of creative ways of getting around guards. Um, even though some of that number stuff is also there. Yeah. Uh, are you maxed out that you were saying there were six characters in total right now? Is yeah, there are right? six characters right now. Uh, we're planning on having more than that. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we'll be at by the time we're releasing. Um, and and uh, in terms of how many you can have on a single mission? Yeah. So the maximum is five. Okay. Yeah. And, and a, per, a team of two plays very differently from a team of five. So in a team of five, it's, uh, it's really hard to play as stealthily Right. Um, and not get caught at all. But you can often, some of the maps get quite large near the end, so you can send off, you know, little like teams of two in mm -hmm. one place, a team of three goes somewhere else to collect certain resources. Yeah. What's like the newbie class? Like, what's the class that you think most people will start out playing at? Well, this should be the team, ways? this is the team that you start with. Yeah. Um, and the idea is that the cyborg can, is really good at hacking, he can access computers wirelessly, he can also scan for these security devices. Um, and the other class, this, uh, this stealth guy, moves silently automatically. So okay. normally you have to sneak, um, and uh, you won't move silently unless you okay. sneak, but the stealth guy moves silently all the time. And sneaking requires more action points? Yeah, it requires more movement okay. points, exactly. Um, and one of the ideas behind the game is that, you know, in addition to being able to see what the corporation's gonna do next turn, you can also see really clearly what your own actions are doing. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you see sound, you see exactly how far your sound is going out. Uh, when, you, when you shoot, you know exactly um, the likelihood of that shot doing one thing or another. Uh, and that seems like something, I know you guys did a lot of that in Mark of the Ninja, yeah. uh, in terms of visualizing um, uh, these sorts of sound changes and gameplay impacting exactly. aspects. 
Yeah, Mark the Ninja taught us a lot about how to design a, a stealth game, mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to apply a bunch of those principles here um, and take it somewhere totally different, but use a lot of the same things mm -hmm. that made Mark the Ninja a successful stealth game. Now, are you building this with sort of a structure of like a sieve in mind where you'll play through an entire campaign and then start from scratch? Or how do you think people are going to play through this? Yeah, the idea is to have a, a kind of short series of uh, okay. campaigns. So, you know, you might play a game and it's pretty common that you'll lose immediately, right? Sure. So you, you'll have a 20 minute game, okay. your first game. And then your next game might be 30 minutes and so on and so forth. So kind of like very shortened, mm -hmm. shortened version of Civilization. Yeah. Um, sort of like, you know, Rogue Legacy or, or FTL or one right. of those games where it's like, you play, and as you play, you're kind of accomplishing things in a meta layer, but you're also just getting better at the mm -hmm. game, right? Uh, is there, so let's say like all of your people die on a mission. That's, yeah. So you're starting from scratch yeah, at that point. From scratch, wow, absolutely. okay, so that's, yeah. again, going back to uh, Don't Starve, uh, obviously. <laughs> exactly. People and, that are not prepared for that sort of investment. <laughs> well, because the game is procedural and because it's pretty quick, the idea is that, you know, you're gonna die, you're yeah. gonna restart. Sure. Um, and your first restart should take you, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and you're actually gaining things in those restarts. So you're gaining access to kind of new types of items. Oh, cool. Uh, but most importantly, you're gaining kind of information about how the game works. Mm -hmm. um, and so eventually, you know, you'll play through and you'll, you'll beat it over and over again, and, and you'll be able to kind of go for high scores and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you unlock, uh, are those like starting equipment that you could start up with? or So new starting teams, which okay. would have different equipment and different skills. Uh, in addition, you know, maybe you'll find different kinds of items in, uh, in the level. Um, we want to make it so it's not that you're getting a, a huge boost from where you were originally. So, you know, a, a super great player could pick up a fresh install of this game yeah. and still beat it, right? Yeah. But, uh, but we did want to give you a feeling of progression, like you're discovering more ways to play the game. So every time it's a new level and it's also new stuff in the game for you. Sure. He's been spotted. Yeah. This is another one of those tight situations. <laughs> so Jason's got to get that stealth guy out of here. Um, when you're exploring the level, you can kind of use your, your stealth, uh, you know, just sneaking and kind of moving around. Mm -hmm. Once you've been spotted, which often happens because of the, the raising threat of yeah. the alarm, um, kind of forces you into these dangerous situations. Uh, now you have to start using your items and okay. also your, your, your kind of movement in a creative way, more or less. So in this case, he's trapped the door. Yeah. Oh, he can... He can ping to make a noise to distract okay. guards. Um, He's also trying to figure out, it looks like only that, uh, that one guard has spotted him and the other two are still looking away. I took over this turret to oh, distract nice. him. Oh, nice. So the turret will actually, uh, this is one of our corpses, kind of the um, military corporation. Okay. Um, there are other corporations. There's one with psychic, uh, oh, psychic abilities and there's another one that's uh, more kind of droid and network focused. Um, so this corporation has turrets you can take over that'll basically uh, do a, do really well against sure. guards that are attacking you. So because Jason's behind okay. cover, there is some cover in this game. So is that visualized by him? Like, how do you know that you're... Oh, I see, the shield. Yeah, there's a small shield, okay. and, and the agent also crouches down. Cool. Uh, and cover is directional, so, uh, you know, if you flank someone, they'll lose the cover bonus. Cool. Um, this game looks awesome, and I'm like, I just want to, like, sit down <laughs> and just, like, not do anything else for all of GDC and oh, just, like, you. absorb <laughs> myself into it. How long is it going to be before everyone in the entire world can have that experience? Sure. It? So, <laughs> um, the alpha is out right now. Yep. The beta is going to be out um, in the coming months, basically, mm -hmm. um, and then releases hopefully sometime this year. Yeah, cool. Uh, and you're looking at uh, PC and Mac? Is that... That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any other platforms right now? Maybe iPad, tablet stuff? Um, you know, we're never ruling anything out, sure. obviously, but uh, we're really just trying to design it to be good for com good for PC and Mac sure. right now. And then you'll go on from there. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming in, guys. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. It was a delight checking out the game. And Thank you. And you've made me uh, want it even more. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching Polygon Live. We'll be here all week from GDC checking out more awesome games like Invisible Ink.